Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Kings of Hemp getting forward. We're about to, oh, we're about a few minutes away from our next game. We have the Havelina men's basketball team taking on the Tarleton State uh, Texans. So we'll get ready for that. Let's uh, recap the first game. Ferris, uh, Tarleton State uh, winners over Havelina's yeah. 72 to 59. Yeah, the, the Texans had, had certainly come out uh, with a lot of fire. You can thank uh, Peyton Adamson for that. Uh, she ended up going 8 of 10 from the three-point line, getting 24 points strictly from behind the arc mark, but she finished with 30 points on the night. And uh, aside from that, you know, uh, the Havelinas did uh, had managed to uh, put Kiara Wright in foul trouble uh, in the first half, but she did come back in the second half, went 7 of 13 from the field, and uh, she had 16 points and 18 rebounds, so a uh, great performance by her. And those are the big keys uh, for the Tex Ams beating uh, the Havelina women's basketball team there. And, uh, you know, moving on to this next uh, men's game here, uh, the guys have been struggling as of late. Uh, they've dropped their last four. And Mark, let me tell you something that uh, I think Coach Pete and the rest of the team have found pretty frustrating. Uh, I got to catch up with them in practice, uh, as I said a little bit earlier on. Uh, got to find out, you know, uh, Coach Pete's mindset with the team and uh, see where him, him and the team were at. And uh, one of the problems for the Havelinas, Mark, is that they had lost uh, against Incarnate Word here. That loss started the four-game losing streak. They lost got that game by three points. Uh, on the 31st, when they played Cameron, they went into double overtime and lost by three points. It was those close losses that, uh, you know, Peterson said, you know, really kind of affect the team's morale, really affect their psyche because it's those close games that, uh, and those are, you know, as you know, uh, definitely more of the heartbreaking ones. Um, yeah, indeed. Uh, there's a, so close, I mean, those uh, those games could have gone out of the way, but they like said, down the stretch, Havelina's a, uh, you know, they're a really good team overall and they're really well coached coming in against this, uh, really good at uh, Tarleton State Texan team a year ago. They were at tops in the Lone Star Conference. Havelina was actually bounced by them in the Lone Star Conference tournament last year. But Havelina is just trying to get back there this year. You know, hopefully uh, start the road back on, to, on the winning track here tonight. Yeah, you know, the last time uh, Kingsville did play Tarleton State was on the 2nd of January. They did lose that game by just six points. Um, so we'll see if they bounce back from that and if they keep that last loss in mind. You know, Coach Pete was talking about how he uh, <clears throat> has seen his team uh, have chippy practice sessions. Uh, he used the word chippy uh, to kind of show, you know, they're pretty emotional. But uh, he said it wasn't really a bad thing. He says, you know, they hope they can use their anger, you know, in their favor to, you know, kind of get back to business. You know, put that put that scowl on your face and get out there and just take care of business, you know, uh, and we'll see if the Havelinas can do that tonight. As I know, uh, they're certainly hoping to. Yeah, so we're about a minute and a half away from the tip-off here. But looking ahead, Havelina is hoping to get the win tonight because uh, four of the last five are going to be off the road. It's like, just like the women, they're going to head to Commons, East New Mexico, and West Texas, A&M. And then come home for Angelo 727 and finish up uh, at Abilene Christian. And hopefully after that, they'll be... Uh, in action four days later against the against somebody from the Lone Star Conference in the tournament. So we're gonna get started here. Well, we'll get started here. Yeah. Uh, have the national anthem and uh, some pregame festivities before we get going. Lieutenant Coach Hyde Pettis. Juan Pettis has been here for quite a while. 
Yeah, Lieutenant Bettis is uh, one of the familiar faces out on campus. So. Honorary coach here tonight, so we're going to get the national anthem going. Starting lineups for the Havelinas and the Texans. So for the Texans, John, Kathy, and Macklin, Chuck Guy, Coleman first, Brian Word, and Damian Clemens will be the top of uh, the five guys to start for Top State. And on the other side for the Havelinas, Shaw Bassey, Dwight Taylor, Adonis Bailey, Adam McMahon, and Reed Wallace for the Havelinas. Yeah, Coach Pete has, uh, you know, messed with his lineup uh, plenty of times this season. Uh, this has been a starting lineup for a little bit, though. He was pretty comfortable with uh, putting Reed and McMahon, you know, more in the post. Even the forward position, the white tail, Donis Bailey, and Rashad Bassey. Here comes the light show. Probably one of my favorite things of his uh, basketball game. Oh, yeah. Like, of the body gets you pumped up. Yeah. And you know, uh, <clears throat> to add the metaphorical twist to it, Mark, you know, the spotlight really is going to be on the Havelinas here. But, you know, they're currently, like I said, struggling coming off a four-game losing streak. They're definitely not going to want to push that, you know, streak to five. Uh, so we'll see if they can come back and win this. You know, they did throw a lot of promise earlier on in the season. And with that light on the end of the season, so they don't get shine blocked here. Yeah, because if their sign got blocked, so do their hopes of making it to the playoffs. Avalina sitting at number eight right now, tied with the Aiden Commerce. Aiden Commerce getting the edge right now. Uh, with the overall record, the both teams seen at 5-7 within the conference. Big game for the Avalinas. So Pete Pearson, a 16th season for the Avalinas. Taking on uh, coach Lon Reisman in his 25th season with the Tarleton State Texans. So a good, bat good battle of uh, the coaches right here. Nice coaching matchup to see. Yeah. Pete Peterson, he said uh, earlier this season, not 100 wins with the Avalinas. Over 200 wins in his career. So, yeah, picked up his 100th win in the LSC. Certainly, you know, not, not an easy task to accomplish, especially in a conference like this one. In terms of the coaching matchup, Mark, you know, I'm going to have to give it to Coach Pete because he does have the honorary head coach, Lieutenant Pettis, sitting on his side here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I, I go with that. 
<laughs> we're all going to be jumping against uh, Kathy Macklin here to start. And Tip's going to go over to the Avalinas as we're going to get started here with Bassey. Top of the key right now being guarded by Chuck Guy. Donis Bailey shoots, scores to get started early. You know, the last time we saw Donis Bailey on this home court was when they did lose to Incarnate Word by uh, three points mark. Bailey went nine for nine in that game. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you remember. Yeah, but Mr. Livingston on the other side had a better game for the Avalinas. The end of that game was really, really exciting. So the Avalinas trying to bounce back here at home as they get out to the early start. Frost shoots, misses. Kathy Macklin can they get fouled on the putback shot. Yeah, I thought I was going to go on the Javelinas, but uh, Bassey did well to keep up with Frost all the way up until the end. And he actually blocked his view from getting a good look at the rim, which is why that last shot by Coleman first, excuse me. Kathy Macklin out the line. 6'9", junior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A Juco transfer out of Wabash Valley Junior College at the line as he drains the first one. Foul was on Bailey. Going to be his first, first of the night for the Avalinas here as we get started. 41 seconds into the game. Bailey's certainly going to want to be careful. He doesn't want to pick up another foul here. Uh, he's one of the bigger producers for the Javelinas. And uh, I don't know if Coach Pete's uh, going to want him to sit on the bench for most of this first half. Kathy Macklin splits there. Massey goes off the pick, shoots. And the Avalinas uh, starting off here really well. Two for two. Bailey and Bassey getting on the board first with the Avalinas. Bassey is the only Havelina that's averaging in double, uh, double uh, figures right now. 15 two points a, a per game. So uh, you definitely expect him to come out and have a good showing here against the Texans. Guy gets in the lane, challenges with Mao and puts it in over the taller defender of the Havelinas in the paint. 4-3, Havelinas lead. Yeah, guy did a good job there. Sucked out two defenders and then went all the way into the, to the lane. They couldn't uh, follow him in there. Got a good layup. Bassey stops, pulls up over Guy. Puts it in. Bassey's two for two. Avelina's rolling right now on the offensive end. Three shots to start the game. It looks early on like Rashad Bassey's all about business here. He's showing me something, Mark. Yeah, Coach Coach Feed uh, already going to his bench as Damon Warren comes to the scorer's table getting ready to check in at the next dead ball. Guy charges to the basket. They're going to call a charge it foul on him and Bassey's gonna be the man to take it. It's gonna be the first foul on Charlton State. Avalina's gonna get the ball. He's now gonna sit down and uh, here comes Warren inserted into the lineup here. Just uh, over two minutes played. Yeah, you know, uh, Coach Pete loves, uh, you know, changing his lineup and you'll see him do it uh, almost constantly than any other coach I've ever seen. But you know, he, he always finds the right lineups and uh, manages to make it work for his team. Warren can't put the shot back in after Bassey miss going to the rim. It's going to be his first miss of the night. Aveline is up 6-3. Kathy Mackin thought about putting it on the floor. Gives it up to Word, and Word misses. Resets. The top of the key. A nice uh, contest by the Havelinas there as we try to get it up. Havelinas in the open court. Down is Bailey. Puts it up and in. Havelinas on the fast break. Yeah, you know, that was a great job on both ends of the floor. And they got it to Bailey quick enough. Bailey sorted in there with that layup. Puts his team up by five. Havelinas are definitely going to want to try to, you know, keep the lead. Uh, against the Texans, and uh, they're going to have to try to keep it locked down like that for, for the rest of the game. The Avalina starting off strong here. They points out of the gate, shooting really well and taking their time on the offensive end, getting good shots. Ward's going to drive, pull up, miss. It's going to be offensive Macklin. goaltending, I, I think. I don't know. They're going to call the push, it looks like, on uh, Reed Wallace as Kathy Macklin was going for the push. -in. 
Looks like the foul is going to be called before the basket. Yeah. Bailey's going to sit down. Tomas Diaz is going to come in for the Javelinas. Yeah, so far all the points have come from Bassey and Bailey. Bailey takes a seat. We'll see what the Javelinas can come up uh, with without him on the court. Force gets into the lane. He's going to get the foul called. He's going to get himself to the line. Yeah, and that, that call's pretty questionable there. It, it looked pretty clean. It's going to be a 13 foul in the half of as we take our first time out. And Coach Pete's having some words with the official as he goes to the timeout. Not very happy about one of the calls just made. Yeah, I mean, it, that one was certainly a questionable call, you know, and, and you always like to see a ref that, that'll let teams play a little bit more than, you know, refs that don't. Uh, but early on, it looks like the refs are, are trying to set the tone of the game. It looks like they don't want too much physicality. Uh, and so far, the, you, you know, Havelinas enjoy that physical defense, Mark. You know, they're, they're all about playing that physical defense, and they're not afraid to, to take a few fouls. Uh, so tough on the Javelinas when they have a ref on them yeah, so like that one. The Javelinas starting off 4 of 6 here tonight in the early going the first uh, 4 minutes of this game have the lead right now 8-3 and as we look at the standings in the low side conference throughout the state city at number 4 at 7-5 two games out of 3rd place Javelinas just two games out of of uh, their place as well as Carlton, so those two games ahead of the Javelinas. So we come back out first on the line for the Texans. Coleman first, the 6'1 junior out of Denison, Texas, went to Denison High School, puts in the first free throw. First sings them both to pull within three, eight to five here. 19, 15, 58 left to go in the first half. Havelina is leading eight to five. Petrell Bracey who's on the court right now is uh, one of the Havelinas that, that transferred over to here uh, over the Christmas break. And uh, he's been really big off the bench for the Havelinas. Uh, he's, he's definitely gonna wanna come out and, and try to have a good night here as well. Diaz gets in the Way of that pass, Jennifer Taylor. Bracy straight away three misses. Looks like a track me trying to run it down. Avalinas did, but gets tipped in into the hands of a Texan. Yeah, Bracy did a good job of getting there to serve the ball, just no one was there to uh, reward him. DeAndre Upchurch gets chipped up there as he was driving to the basket. It's going to be another foul on Javelinas. This one's going to go against Diaz. Yeah, so they already have 14 fouls so far. The Javelinas are uh, pretty physical here in the early going. And poor body's falling first. Pulls up. Wallace in his face, but he's going to get the foul there. Yeah, Wallace got first. Uh, pretty bad on the form. It looks like he might have not got in there in time to contest the shot. Just tried to uh, bother it. Ended up hitting the arm up first. So first going back to the line here for the Texans. Try to bring his team closer. Three point game. Fifteen oh four. That's his first. Makes the second. Eight to six. Gracie Wallace, Diaz, Warren, right on, excuse me, Taylor on the Oh, the floor. and God, with a mad steal. Just like that, it's tied eight to eight. The Texans even it up here in the early going. The Avalinas got up to a pretty quick start. On the Warren against the taller Kathy Macklin. 
nothing to it there. Uh, Devin Warren's a pretty good post player. He just needs to, you know, play a little bit more discipline in the post. He's got the size, uh, and he certainly got the physicality. He just needs to work on the execution of the shot, I and mean, he'd be a dangerous player. Upchurch shoots for three. This is off the back iron, corralled by Wallace. Taylor in the corner gets out of there. He's gonna reset. And go inside to Warren. And Bracey driving through the hole. Warren finds him and he's gonna go to the line. A chance at a three-point play. Yeah, Bracey and Warren was certainly on the same page on that play. Uh, Bracey bounced past it in to Warren and ended up cutting in on the rim. Bracey got a good look at it. Managed to handle the foul, keep the ball in. He's gonna get the end one opportunity right here. There's a few more subs come on for the Javelinas. Warren Diaz and uh, Wallace are going to sit down as Jamal Bonds to third and Jamal Brown come in for the Javelinas. Coach Pete really emptying out his bench here. And, you know, like I said, Mark, that's the way Coach Pete usually does it. He's a, he's a big fan of uh, keeping Mike's fresh and just rotating lots of players out there. That first, uh, take a little bit of a spill there. As Taylor is gonna, he's gonna take a seat, and Donis Bailey is gonna come back in for the Hogs. Now the last time the Hogs were here at home, like you said, and kind of, it's kind of where Bailey had himself a heck of a game. Yeah, it went nine of nine from the field. Offensive foul is gonna be called here. But yeah, you know, Bailey came out for a big game and he's a big time player, uh, comes from Chicago. Chicago, of course, a great basketball city. So can't be surprised that he's good at what he does. We got 13 and a half left in the first half. Havelina's leading 11-8. Bailey gets bumped by Damstra. So they're going to call the foul yeah. and, You know, that, that was, again, one of those, uh, you know, bumping fouls, uh, not too much contact on it. But, you know, you can, you can at least see the refs being consistent here, trying to call it both ways. It's going to be the second foul on uh, Damstra, the 6'9", freshman out of Dublin, Texas. Bailey tries to split the defense, loses the handle, and they're going to go to the ground and the possession arrow goes over to Tarleton State. Yeah, you know, uh, Bailey had a, had a good idea, tried to split the two defenders there, but it looked like the space was just too narrow. So it's gonna be Texan ball. And Bailey just makes up for it, gets the ball back for his team. So. Halina is going to inbound right, for, right into their basket here. Jamal Brown lets it go, misses. Bonds third, runs it down, and reset here. Halina is very patient in their offense here tonight. And, uh, you know, that's the way they should want to play. They do have the three-point lead right now, and uh, as long as they stay patient and comfortable, they're, they're, they'll find their shots like that one right there. Maybe puts it up with Mog going to go up for the offensive board, but they're going to call the foul. And Avelina is going to go over to the Texans there. Next foul is going to put the, uh, the Texans in the bonus. Luke Mog gets a whistle for his first. It's going to be the 16th foul for the Avelinas. So, you know, still uh, more, uh, over 12 minutes left in this game mark, and it looks like the Havelinas are just about to put the Texans in the bonus. Uh, that's certainly not something uh, they're going to want to deal with. Guy trying to get past Bracey, and McMahon gets a piece of that one, it looked like, but... Guy gets his own rebound. Upchurch drives to the basket. But Kathy Macklin gets it. And it looks like he's going to get sent back to the line. And 
looks like Kathy Macklin is, is going to be a little bit of a matchup problem for the Havalunas, but got a couple of big men there on the bench so they could squeeze a few fouls out of. But it's going to be the first on Bonds. Yeah, Havalinas, you know, have a, have a certain unique quality about every player on the bench, and Coach Pete plays all of them. Uh, you know, there's really not uh, any player that doesn't get used, so even when players do get in foul trouble, uh, Coach Pete is always pretty confident in the, uh, the subs. Yeah. Um, Michael Harge comes in for, for Guy as Chuck Guy sits down. Bonds, the long jumper on the outside, rattles in and out. Kamal tries to save it, but he's gonna get whistled. for out of bounds. It's gonna go over to the Texans. Yeah, the ball had just uh, bounced out of bounds before Magma got to it. Timeout gets called here. So good start uh, for the Avalinas. Uh, for both teams actually here in a very close game. Yeah, it's, it's been competitive so far. Uh, score is just 11 to nine. Havelinas uh, do have the better shooting percentage here, going 5'11 from the field. Tarleton only shooting two of nine, but you know what, Mark? They've had uh, eight free throws coming their way. Havelinas only have had one so far. And they're five of eight from the, from the free throw line, and uh, that's why they're, they're closer than, than they seem. That's a narrow lead here for the Hogs as they lead 11-9. And Havelinas loses with the last score, including a double overtime game in Cameron back on the 31st of January. And the, and the blowout loss at Western State as they lost 79-59 to the top team in the LSC. But before that, the Havelinas were winners of four of the last five. And they, four, four, four or five were sitting pretty in the top half of the Lone Star Conference. But since then, it's been a little bit of a nightmare for, the, for Coach Pete and company. Yeah, and, and it's been a struggle, but, you know, struggles like these sometimes when, when your team can find a way out of it, uh, it, it ultimately makes them a better team overall. And uh, we'll see we'll see if that skid puts the Havelinas in that same situation. Havelinas by two. Brown gets a piece of it, but Upchurch gets it, drives to the rim, puts it up and in. Up Scores knotted up at 11. Yeah, Upchurch did a good job of just shielding Brown from getting near the ball and managed to hold it all the way until he did get to the basket. Good layup by him, tying up the game at 11. Bracey trying to go down low to McMahon, but the pass goes right over his head and off his fingertips, and it's going back the other way. Carlton State, chance for them to take their first lead. Havelinas have led by as many as five here in the early going. Um, they're going to call Bonds the third for an elbow. I mean, a shoulder there. And they're going to call the foul. It's going to be... It's going to be the 18 foul. It's going to be the second on Bonds. So Bonds is going to take a seat. Yeah, just too many fouls early on, Mark. Still 11 minutes in this first half, and the Havilians already have eight team fouls. Rashad Bassey with two fouls already. That's why he's on the bench right now. So Harge makes the first one uh, as they enter the one and one. Harge misses off the front of the iron. It's gonna go back the other way, Hogs. Down by one. They're going to call a foul on, uh, looks like it's going to go against Wallace. A foul away from the ball. Havelin has had too many careless turnovers to start off this game, and uh, foul trouble is, is not being uh, the friend here in this half either. It's going to be the second on Wallace, so the Havelin is already with nine fouls. About to go into the double bonus. 
uh, is Tarleton State if uh, Havilians grab another foul here, and then they'll be shooting the free throws the rest of the way in the first half. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be tough for the Havilians to deal with. They are, like I said, just the more, you know, when they play defense, they like that physical style of play, but it looks like the refs uh, aren't, aren't going to have it here tonight. Yeah, so it's going to have to adjust the way they play ball here. Oh, there's a nice fake and, there by Word. Word and that's the problem, you know, uh, Bailey could have played better defense there. Couldn't touch him though because he already has one foul. He doesn't want a second one get sent to the bench as well. And uh, you know, when you're in foul trouble, you you got to make sacrifices like that one, and that'll come back to uh, to hurt you. So they're gonna call the foul down low. It looks like it's gonna be on Clemens uh, working against McMah. That's going to be on Clemens. That's going to be his first and the fifth for Charlton State. Going to stay having the ball. Bailey catches and shoots on the inbound. Puts it in. 14-13. Inside of 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Havelina shooting 5 for 12 here to start the game. 41%. And going to the ground is Guy as he uh, gets into the lane. Looks like they're going to whistle him for traveling, I believe it was. Yeah, and... Uh Havley is definitely going to be happy with that call. They, they, they don't want to pick up a 10th foul. So the Havelinas right now are playing, the, like I said, with nine fouls. Nine and a half to go. Havelinas with the ball down one, 14-13. Gracie Bailey, Wallace, McMahon, and Taylor on the floor. Wallace from three puts it in. Havelina is up by two now. Reed Wallace, one of the a better shooting big man probably in the conference. You know, he, he is he is a good shooting big man, Mark, but, you know, he, out of out of the Havilina talent, he goes under the radar, which is why uh, he gets those open opportunities so often. Yeah, 6'4 guy. And there's Wallace intercepting that pass, goes over the other way to the Havilinas. Hoggies forcing turnovers. Yeah, Wallace doing work on both ends of the floor here. Coach Pete should certainly be happy. Now Wallace, that plenty of that Wallace family, real fundamentally sound in basketball. Brother Ryan, a couple of years ago, one of the starters for the Havelinas, and Coach Pete. Yeah, time out being called here. The Havelinas were uh, just not on the same page on the offense. Coach Pete realized he wanted to save this possession, so went ahead and called the timeout. Yeah, so the Havelinas are regaining the lead. 16-14, uh, 8.38 to go. Here, Coach Pete wanted to get the timeout, but he said so far pretty. Uh, Pretty evenly matched game. Yeah, yeah except it, for the having the free throws are really being the difference here. Charlton State already shot ten, made six of them, uh, opposed to the Havilene one. Yeah, that's the problem. And you know, w once once you get foul trouble, Mark, it, it's one of those things that stays with you the entire game. It's not really something you can shake off. The team just has to adjust, you know, its its entire way of playing, and uh, really try to. Uh, Try to stop the whistles from getting blown here. But leading the way for the Havelinas, Donna's Bailey, three or four from the field, and six points so far for him. Tracy Brown, Warren Wallace, and Taylor on the floor for the Hogs. Are they going to Warren, but snooping it out from a while away was Clemens as he gets his hands on that pass. Yeah, great read by Clemens. Is really sticking the defense to him right there. And Bracey gets comes away with the steal. And there's Brown. Three on two. The Havelinas right now. Two the holes. Brown giving the ad run. And Brown looks like he might have hurt himself. But looks a little ginger getting up. But it looks like he'll be okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything too serious. Just a little bit of a hard fall. But uh, Brown shouldn't have too much of a problem with that. But great job by him. Leading on the, uh, taking on the lead for the fast break there. Yeah, he had, a, he had a couple of options, the one to each uh, side of him on the way down, but decided to take it to the hole himself. Pays off, now he's going to be at the line trying to put the hogs up by five. Uh, it's going to match the largest lead of the game so far. They were up by five with 16.54 left in the, in the first half here. We're down to inside of, just inside of eight minutes here. The Havelina shooting eight for 15, 
53% shooting really well from, from the field right now. And uh, have kind of five turnovers, four, six. Yeah, and that's been the problem for the Havlinas. They have turned the ball over, uh, you know, five times. They have forced Tarleton to six turnovers, though. And they uh, are managing to score off those turnovers. And now Havlinas up by four. But once again, Mark, uh, the real trouble for the Havlinas is going to be their foul trouble here. They already have nine team fouls. Rashad Bassey, their leading scorer, is out on the bench right now with two. Yeah, it looks like the, it looks like the foul trouble, you know, might subside uh, a little bit. The Havlinas can get to half. We're doing a good job here. It's stuck on nine fouls for a couple of couple Cup, minutes. Yeah. It's been a, it's been about two coming up on two minutes and a half since Tarleton last scored at the 10-13 mark of the first of the first uh, the first half here. Yeah, that was the last field goal made. So Jamal Brown gonna go to the line. Take his and one opportunity. Jamal Brown out of Washington, D.C. Uh, transferring him out of Essex County uh, Community College. And he's gonna miss that one. Not converted on a three-point play, but the Havelina is still up by four. 18-14 off the shot. Arge. Ten seconds to shoot here for the Texans. The Havelina is uh, tightening up the defense here. Five to shoot. Guy's gonna have to put it up from way deep. Yeah, and you know, and, and they forced Guy to a tough shot, and that's good, but they just gave it up again to him. Guy finds up church behind the arc. It's gonna be a foul on Tarleton State. The Havelina's gonna get the possession there, but nice, that, good shot there at Tarleton State. Just so couldn't get it to fall there. And that foul is gonna put the Havelinas in the bonus as well. So. Going to be 1-1 one one here for Wallace. Going to get at least one free throw out of this. So Wallace at the line. Misses that one, but Warren is going to get called uh, for coming over the back. And obvious, yeah, kind of an obvious foul. Uh, kind of had the leverage on on the bigger Kathy Macklin. But. Yeah, and you see that Dutrell Bracey talking to Warren, and it it is an obvious foul, and Warren should have understood the position he was in before making a play like that. You know, your, your team's in a lot of foul trouble, and you certainly don't need any more fouls on yourself. But that'll be his first of the night. So it's going to be free throws uh, till the half here. Kathy Macklin, two for four from the line so far. Has shot more free throws himself than the entire Avalina team here in the first half already. And that one's going to rim out, but they're in the double bonus already. Hence the 10th foul, so he's going to get two, no matter what. Yeah, so far, the Texans are 6 of 10 from the free throw line. And he misses them both. Wall is there for the rebound. So the Havelinas, uh, turns out that Warren's uh, foul pays off for whatever it's worth. Yeah, Wallace has four rebounds tonight so far. He, he's, he's definitely playing pretty aggressively but and maintaining a, a low-key performance at the same time. Wallace catches and shoots, and he gets the kind of balance. It's a two-pointer as it was inside the... It was inside the line as he scores there. Yeah, his toe was right, on, uh, right inside the line, but we have it. Sinks his second basket here. Having a good game tonight. So Hogs lead by six, 20 to 14. Havelina's coming out really strong here. And Brown pit taps it away, and he goes to the floor in a scuffle. It well, looks like it's going to be a foul. Yeah, uh, looks like it's going to be on Upchurch here. Upchurch doesn't like the call. He, he ended up on the floor. He actually got a, turned over there by Brown, but they're going to give the they're going to give the foul. Yeah, Upchurch kind of put, <laughs> put uh, Brown in the position to trip, though. Brown tripped over his entire body. 
nonetheless, Brown's going to get a pair of free throws here. That's going to be the eighth uh, foul on Charlton State. As Wallace is going to take a seat. Bonds the third, going to check in. Bonds has two fouls here so far. One of the players in the foul trouble, so he's going to have to be careful during his time on the court. Wallace, two for two, five points. As Brown knocks in the first one. And not to mention four rebounds for Wallace and an assist. You know, so. it's not many boards, but those uh, couple boards was impressive there. Uh, coming out the foul shot off the front of the rim. You know, little things here. You know, the big guys don't ever really get a lot of love for. Yeah, and he, he manages to make it work. He can hit he can hit that the shot from downtown. Brown extends the Hogs lead to eight. The largest lead of the game for the Havelinas. And you definitely got to give Coach Pete credit. The fact that his leading scorer is on the bench right now, Mark, and his team is still up by eight. Shows that, you know, Coach Pete can find the lineup to get almost anything done. Timeout by Tarleton. They're going to want to talk about it just a little bit before they uh, lose this possession. Hogs up 22 to 14. Six minutes, 15 seconds left to go here in the first half. Havelina is playing the end of four-game losing streak, dating back to... Uh, Dating back to January 19th, whenever they won at home against Abilene Christian. But since then, Feld and Carney worked twice. Cameron to Midwestern State. Cameron uh, defeated Abilene in two, in two overtimes. Cameron sitting right now 9-5 in the conference. Four, uh, a couple of games ahead of the Abilene. Only, Abilene is only two games behind in the, lo in the loss column. gets ejected by Bonds. Bonds the third, swings that one. Yeah, great shot there by Kathy Macklin. But it just looks like uh, Marshall Bonds got up there, looked at the ball mark and inspected it, and then ejected it. It's a great block by Marshall Bonds. That's the way she goes. And Bonds gets a, <laughs> runs into a screen there. The Havelina is still able to come up with that. Well, Havelina is everywhere. Carter gets ejected. Out of the corner, Bracey gets it, drives to the inside, and he's going to be rejected by Kathy Macklin, returning the favor on the other end. Yeah, Macklin didn't appreciate the block on him, and he's looking to hurt some feelings out here on the court tonight. Now, yeah, some authority on that one, so Bracey, uh, Bracey giving up a few inches to the man, so he can't feel too bad about it. So here's Bracey again. If Bracey had gone through that play, it would have been a very sensational layup for him. Brown gaining the inside, tries to find Warren. Warren puts it back to Brown, and Brown puts it in. Nice little sequence there by the Hogs. Certainly on the same page tonight. Dan Brown uh, had an off-bounce shot there, and with the left hand managed uh, to work over those odds, still get that shot in. Puts his team up by double digits. Again, we're coming up to about the five-minute mark. Havelina is coming out on fire, up by 10. Oh, nice uh, alley -oop pass there to Carter, but Carter gets his own rebound after the miss and puts it back in. Nice move underneath by Carter. The 6'6 sophomore out of Duncanville, Texas. Avalina is by eight. Taylor Warren, Bracey Bonds, the third and Brown on the floor for the Havelinas. Brown for three. Off the front of the rim, rebounded by Carter. And let's send it off to the point guard, Guy. Guy Carter, Kathy Macklin. Upchurch. And first on the court for the Texans right now as we get to the four and a half mark here in the half. There's going to be another whistle. It looks like this is going to go against Brown for a foul. Yeah, you see Brown complaining about that call. Upchurch had him wrapped up, and Brown was just trying to you know, get position there. That's why uh, he seems a little bit unhappy with the call. Another foul here for the Havelinas. Bailey and McMahon getting ready to come in for the Havelinas. They check in at the scores tables. Upchurch drops in the first free throw. Warren and Brown going to have a seat. 
Yeah, and great play from the both of them coming off the bench. Kathy Macklin going to have a seat for the Texans. Is Devine Carter going to come in? Excuse me, that's Jacob Damstra. Warren picked up uh, two rebounds and two assists uh, <clears throat> on his time on the court. Upchurch sits down. Jamal Ford Brown comes back in. Jamal Brown, two of four with six points. Havilene is by six. Coming up to about four minutes to go in the first half. They're going to go and need some McMahon. Bracey thought about it, steps back, shoots over the defender, hand in his face. Guy did a good job of playing the hand up, but Guy had given Bracey. Bracey. Yeah, Guy had given Bracey too much room there when Bracey would cross them over. And Bracey punished them with the space, knocked down that jumper. First with 10 seconds to shoot, crosses two Havelinas, but goes up and puts it in. That's a good move by first. The right. Defense looked good. First made something out of nothing there. Able to, able to thread the needle, put the ball between those defenders and get to the rim. It's going to be at the line, trying to complete a three-point play. Havelinas by six, 26-20, just inside of three and a half minutes to go here in the opening half. Havelina's uh, playing well right now, shooting 55% from the field. Three, one of three from beyond the arc, three for five from the line. Grabbing 11 rebounds, three offensive boards. Solid, uh, solid first half here for the Havelinas. Yeah, and you know, the, the offense mainly is credited, I believe, due to the fact that their chemistry is so good regardless of which squad, you know, or which players are on the court. Um, you can put any player, to play with any player on the Havelina team, Mark, and, and they'll play together just fine, as, as you can tell. Coach Pete changes the lineup a lot and uh, not making too much of a difference. One of those good problems for Coach Pete. Yeah, you know, whenever you have a lot of inter uh, interchangeable uh, lineups that you can use, utilize out there, you know, it's got to be a, a really good sign of things. So first going to be at the line, trying to cut into this Havelina lead, trying to complete a three-point play. Havelina's come back with Warren, Taylor, Bracey, Wallace, and Bailey. Another one of those lineups for Coach Pete. Yeah, put Warren back in after a pretty brief stint on the bench. Looks like Coach Pete might want to use the size. Bailey. Six to shoot. Taylor shoots, but it's not going to count. They're going to call. They're going to call a foul there. Yeah, and he, he he had just pushed away his defender a little too much there. You could see the arm extend, and uh, that's what the refs are going to call him on. Twenty-six twenty here inside of three to go. Texans trying to end this half on a, on a bit of a high note here. Yeah, just two and a half minutes left. Guy over Warren off the glass. Puts it in, 26-22. Avelina is going to slow down here and take care of this one. So they're going to have to try to make sure all their players are on the same page. I don't know why City possessions here at the end of the half. Bailey almost falls down. He gets the ball to Wallace. Bailey gets in the lane, has a has a hole, but misses. There's Warren for the putback. Wide open lane there for Bailey, just unable to finish. Yeah, Bailey uh, basically set up the opportunity there for Warren off that missed layup, and uh, Warren with the putback. 
Taylor's gonna get called for another foul there. So it's gonna be the second foul on Taylor. There's a couple Javelinas with a couple fouls. Yeah, so Taylor picks up two back-to-back -back fouls here. Guy makes that one. Looks like Brown's getting ready to come back in. Taylor's gonna sit down. Ma with two, Wallace with two fouls, Bassey with two fouls, and Marshall Marsh and Bonds with third with two fouls. We haven't really seen Bassey come back in. Yeah, and you know, I, I think it's because of the fact that, that uh, you know, Coach Pete really wants to save him until the second half, considering he has two fouls on him now. But the Havelina's playing well enough that uh, he can afford to do that here, as long as the Havelina's stay in front. I think he has the luxury of doing that. Has a really solid team with a pretty deep bench. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, if it ain't broke, don't break it. War Warren, nice little spin move in the lane. Puts it up over the defender and in. Avelina's lead by six. Yeah, Warren with just a grown man move there. Putting the moves on the post, getting it in off the glass. So coming up to about a minute left. Avelina's up by six points here in the game that they really need right about now. Getting underneath a dampster and he's rejected by Brown, but they're gonna call the foul over the back on Brown. And it's not like that call one bit, but yeah. nice effort there by Brown. That's Brown's second foul. You know, I don't like the call either. Brown uh, showed the hustle, showed the effort, and it did look clean. The dampster. So inside of a minute to go here, Dampster at the line, trying to cut into the lead. Yeah, that's gonna be Brown's second foul. So now he also has two fouls, got five Havelinas with a couple of fouls, and Dampstra sees that one fall. Five yeah. lead. Uh, Looks like Coach Pete's gonna keep him on. Only about a minute left anyhow. Kathy Macklin uh, comes back in for Tarleton State. Uh, 50 seconds left here. Gracie, good matchup for him. Puts it up over the defender, but can't connect with anything. Yeah, that shot came Noah close to the rim. Looks like he had a matchup advantage there on Clemens, but just cannot put the shot up well enough. Yeah, just going to time it right. Going to time the release right, and going to need to go back to the defensive end and uh, work on that end. About a two-second difference between the shot and game clock. Charleston State wants to make sure they're the ones with the last shot of the game. Guy going to take Bracey, but Guy falls to the floor. Kathy Macklin gets his pass intercepted by Bailey, but he's, it looks like he's going to get the foul called as he's crossing the half court. 4.9 seconds left. Good foul there by Charleston. It looks like Bailey uh, had the lane and nobody was going to stop him, it looks like. Yeah, Hodge didn't seem too happy with the call, but you're right, Mark, it was a smarter call. You don't want to get out of Bailey's way and let him, you know, run to the rim and give us a nasty dunk. So Warren's going to Warren's gonna have a seat. Bond's going to come back in. Bond's third wall is Bailey, Bracey, and Brown on the floor right now for the last five seconds. It's Bailey. Gonna uh, earn a second free throw here. Bailey misses the second one. Guy launches it. That's how the house gonna end. 31 25. Avelina's coming out a uh, solid. At the beginning of the game, uh, took a lead led by as many as 10, going uh, up by six here, shooting 54%, really, really well from the field. And yeah, you know, usually going into halftime, uh, I would be sitting here talking to you about uh, how good Rashad Bassey did, but you know, he got two fouls early on. He still ended up with, uh, scoring four points for the Javelinas, but he was on the bench for, you know, the majority of that first half. Javelinas being led instead 
by Adonis Bailey, three of five from the field, seven points for him. Jamal Brown falling right on the heels of that, two of four, six points on the night for him. Havelina's River, 31-25 lead. Forced Tarleton to eight turnovers. Let's see if they can keep momentum going and finally break this losing skid. All right, well, that's gonna be a half. Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys back in a few minutes. Somebody come down and challenge Anthony. All right, Anthony, we're just gonna go with you. We don't have, we don't have a whole lot of time. All right, Ryan. The ball's right there, yeah, there you go. All right, you gotta do a layup, a free a free throw and a three pointer. You have to start at the free throw line with your layup. Yeah. 35 seconds to do them all on your mark. Get set, go! Your mom was calling.
don't know how to make this one work. I can talk to her for you. Mom, we'll call you back. Welcome back to the Avalina Broadcast Network. I'm Mark Molina and alongside Ferris Sabawi. And uh, we have a pretty uh, nice basketball game shaping up here at Havelina's taking a six point lead, 31-25 into the half. Havelina is shooting 54% in the first half, but riddled with foul trouble as the Havelinas have a couple of couple of players uh, with two fouls here and Havelina's played in the bonus for a majority of that first half. Yeah, you know, uh, coming into this half, Mark, there are actually five Havelina players with uh, two fouls. And so we'll, we'll see if, if that affects him here. Rashad Bassey was sidelined for most of the first half strictly because of foul trouble. Um, we'll see if his rhythm is shaken from it and we'll see how he responds. All right, starting the first half, Bate, Bassey, Wallace, Taylor, McMahon, uh, McMahon, and uh, Adonis Bailey. Yeah. Pretty much the same lineup they had started with here uh, in the game. Wallace is going to take the quick three. Comes off the front of the iron and is rebounded by Word. So Havelina is trying to strike quickly. Yeah, Havelina's had a good idea in mind and, and a good idea to start the half. Uh, that shot just didn't go in. But it was a good offensive sequence for him. Guy passes it to Clemens and the Havelina is uh, having a little bit of a defensive breakdown on that play. Yeah, you know, when Reed Wallace goes in to do the double team around the three-point line, someone in the post is going to be left inevitably open. And uh, no Havelina was there to, to cover uh, when Wallace went for the double team. Clement's able to get free and cut to the basket. Makes the Havelinas pay. So 
the Havelinas uh, lead down the four, 31-27. Bailey working against Word, puts up the little runner. Puts Dan Havelina's 33. Yeah, one thing you don't want to give Adonis Bailey is too much room to work with. Even with the shot clock down, if you give him enough room, he'll dribble his way out of trouble, just like he did there. So the Havelina's sticking up the defense here. So nice fake out by Clemens. He tries to go against McMullen and dunk it. Pokemon. Yeah. But he gets a he gets the wall there instead. Yeah, Clemens with a good move got open and looked like he was about to slam it down, but McMahon made sure that the basket did not come that easy to him. Ha ended up fouling, but you know it is it is a good foul of sending Clemens to the charity stripe to earn his points instead. Clemens, 6-2 out of Dallas, sophomore out of Conrad High School at the line for Tarleton State. And just to show you uh, about the foul trouble and, and how much it's affected uh, the game, Tarleton has had 19 free throw attempts so far, having this with only nine. Big difference right there, but yet the Havelinas still uh, have a six point advantage. Word, thought about it, gonna put it on the ground and dribble, and he's gonna get the finish at the rim, throws it down. Havelinas just had nobody in the lane that time. Well, that was a grown man move there, great play. The Havelinas can console themselves with anything, it's at two points, it's two points either way. Massey puts up the high arcing shot, misses on that one. Charlton State bringing back the other way, down by just four now. All the way to the rim is Guy. He puts it in. Going to be called with the and one. Taylor's going to be called with the foul. It's Taylor's third foul here already, so he might have to uh, head to the bench. Chuck Guy going to be at the line for a chance at a three-point play. Yeah, and Talton, uh, you know, came out of halftime so confident, and you could see them attacking the basket so much more, and it's paying off for them. They're just within one point now. 33-32. All the Havelina's a little frustrated here. You can tell not liking the rhythm of the game. Quick 7-2 run here by the Texans to start the half. Havelina's. Bassey puts it up off the back iron. Bailey got the rebound. Tries to save it out of bounds, but they're going to whistle him foot on the line. It's going to go back the other way. Tarleton State trying to take a lead here since back early in the first half. Yeah, now this has been the same problem for the Javelinas over, you know, uh, their losing streak. You know, they'll, have, they'll build up a lead and they'll have it, and then they'll just lose it. And it's on miscommunication, and it's on the lack of effort on the defensive end. First driving, the first uh, gets the ball up, but can't finish. He will go to the line and shoot a couple. It's going to be the fourth on Taylor. So Taylor's probably going to have to take a seat here. Jamal Brown going to come off the bench. More than likely going to replace him. Tie game here. Warren's going to come in from McMahon. And here comes Brown. You know, uh, looking at it, uh, McMahon and Dwight Taylor so far haven't contributed too much to this game anyhow. Uh, Warren and Jamal Brown, on the other hand, uh, have had a good first half. So, you know, this, this lineup might be a little bit better for the Javelinas. The yeah, Javelinas trailing now by one. So, 9-2 to two a run here for Charleston State to start the half. Javelinas fall behind now by a point. Javelinas looking really good in the first half. Coming out here struggles. Yeah. 
Brown gonna put it on. Finds Wallace. Wallace to Bailey. Straight ahead three. Off the back iron. That was a good offensive sequence. Uh, just one of those things once again where the shot didn't fall. Yeah, you know, Brown put it on the hardwood. Had a nice drive. And Bailey just gets beat there by Guy. Uh, Guy just turned his head slightly, hinted one way, and went the other. Nothing yeah. much Bailey can do there. And once Guy beat Bailey on the dribble, nobody helped Bailey out after that. So Coach P going to take the timeout. Definitely needs to talk uh, talk to his team as Texans started the second half on fire and now have a three-point lead. 11-2 run here. Second half. So now the Javelinas find themselves down three. Uh, came out uh, shooting very, very well in the first half. Went into the half looking strong. But since then, the Texans here in the second half have taken over and have taken the lead. Javelinas now down by three. This is the large lead for Tarleton. Since 10 minutes, 13 seconds left in the first half. Yeah, it, it looked like, you know, Kingsley certainly did have the advantage in the first half. But something you didn't see from the Texans was uh, the tenacity that they're showing here in the second half. They didn't really bring the fight to the Javelinas like they're doing right now. And now the Javelinas are on their toes just a little bit. And it's, it's important to see how the Javelinas respond, uh, you know, specifically from this time out. You know, this is the first time out since the half, you, you, your team lost the lead. And, uh, if you're a, bash, uh, a boxer, you know, you just got punched in the jaw, you got to see how you respond from it. So, 16 minutes, five seconds left to go here in the game. Havelina is trailing by three, 36, 33. Warren in the game. Brown shoots over the defender. Finally gets the Havelina's uh, field goal, so pulling within one. Game tightened up here. Yeah, Brown with eight points, three to five from the field so far. Misses that one, Havelinas get the rebound. Yeah, Damon Warren secured that rebound, made sure his team had it. Havelina certainly don't want to be giving anything up right now. They gotta try to get back in this one. Wallace from the wing, Wallace misses. Havelina's gone cold. Yeah, you know, just a little bit. Uh, they gotta they gotta try to keep their heads up, understand they're only down by one point. And uh, understand that they're still very much in this game. Oh, they're gonna call Wallace on the blocking foul. I thought he had his feet set there. Does not like the call at all. Yeah, well, Wallace seemed like he was there for quite a while. Anyways, uh, his feet were more than set. So Clemens gonna be at the line. We have a timeout here. The only thing that I think the reason the refs may have called it, he didn't look like he was necessarily standing all the way straight up. Uh, his arms are out a little bit. Might have uh, changed the ref's mind on that call. So just under 15 minutes left here. Havelina's down by 136. 235 here. I'm going the wrong side. Just briefly here with good friend Colton Williams. Colton, how are you? Pretty good, Paris. Pretty good. Uh, what have you noticed so far in this game? Well, it, you know, it's a different tempo coming ahead of the second half I've seen. You know, the men had a good first half. It seemed like they stepped up there a little bit. Like they got a little too relaxed during the halftime and they get up the lead here. You know, hopefully they can uh, change it around here before it gets before they get farther behind here in the game. You know, it's been a pretty consistent theme for them uh, on the four-game losing streak. They they will take the lead in some of those games and keep it for a while, and then let the clutch moments get away from them. Yeah, the um, talker right now has momentum on their side. It all started with that uh, couple of shots back where they had that dunk, and it seemed like they they took all the energy out of the fans here for the Havelinas, and they just need to recapture some of that momentum here and then get a couple of stretches and make a couple of shots and get some stops on the defensive side. Yeah, you brought up a good point. Havelina's only down by one, but you know, uh, the way that the crowd has reacted and stuff, you'd feel like they're down by uh, more than that. As Clemens is at the free throw line now, sinks the first one.
See the Howlers if we're trying to find our first player in double digit here. Yeah, still don't have him as Bailey gets the rebound. Clemens made one of two. Puts his team up by two. Jamal Brown with the ball now swinging it around. And Wallace had the room but ended up hesitating. And that'll bite him and he's gonna get called for that tough foul there on Clemens. It'll be the 15th foul on the Javelinas already. And Javelina is still continuing with the same foul trouble that they had in the first half. Yeah, you can see up there that Tarleton has no fouls yet so far in the second half. That's probably the main reason that you know they would get some of these shots and get to the free throw line. Some easy points. Now balling out with Chuck Guy. Being guarded by Bailey. Guy's the one that had beat Bailey on that dribble a couple plays ago. Colton, you were talking about it. Guy has it now going off the Clemens screen. And good defense here. Jamal Brown comes up with the intercepted pass. He's gonna take it the other way. Ball in Bailey's hands now. A good screen set by Warren. And Brown will reward that good screen with sinking his basket. Brown becomes the first player Excuse me. Yeah, Brown will be the first player in double figures here for the Javelinas. Ties the game up at 37. Yeah, Brown's had a pretty consistent game so far. You know, most of his points coming in the first half there. Yeah, Clemens responds with a jump shot of his own from just about the uh, free throw line. 39-37 here with 13-20 left in the game. Texans with the slim two-point lead. But an easy pass, and that's going to be called goaltending there. Yeah, I caught that one just a little bit too late as, as the ball was really on its way down there, so. Tough break, I mean, tough break there for Carlton, but a good break there for the Javelinas. Yeah, Bassi found the very open, Donis Bailey. Bailey took, uh, took his time, tried to get it in off the glass. Kathy Macklin did try to go for the block, but it was called goaltending, so we're all squared up once again here with 39 points for each team so far. 13 minutes left in the game. And the Javelinas come away with it yet again here. Bassey running fast. He wants to take the lead on this. And the Javelinas not coming up with the rebound. They gotta get back there in time. Chuck Guy with an easy lay in there. Puts his team back up by 2. 41-39 here. Yeah, Talton did a good job there on the fast break. He actually had a 3-2 advantage there. Yeah, they did have numbers. Bally, Bailey has it now. Gives it out to Wallace. Wallace is going to go ahead and take that shot. That three-pointer is going to go for him. Puts his team back up by one point. Yeah. They hope that's a shot that the Hubbard need to get the little bit more metamor on their side now, actually giving them the one-point lead. Maybe yeah. something the Hubbardians could build on there. Yeah, that'll put Reed Wallace at two of four from behind the arc. And Wallace, and Warren, excuse me, comes away with the block and the ball. So Jamal Brown has it. And Havillian's going the other way. All right, thanks. Well, thanks, Colton Williams, for uh, holding my spot down. Uh, Colton Williams can certainly hold it down. And so can Jamal Brown getting it in off that jumper, swirling in the basket, and the Havillian's have, have a three-point lead. Havillian's uh, getting back in and out the starting slow here, but since, uh, since that first start of uh, retaking the lead. Well, you know, Jamal Brown coming out big for the Javelinas. He was the first player to get into double figures. Uh, Donis Bailey wouldn't follow, uh, would follow that quickly after. He's leading the Javelinas with 11 points. But also the defense for the Javelinas has been pretty good. Holding Tarleton with only a few shots there and forcing a couple turnovers. And Reed Wallace hitting one from behind the arc to put his team up 42-41 at the time. You get to see Wallace, uh, you know, going down. Uh, usually a uh, guy like him gets going. You know, better watch out. Uh, really good, uh, really good marksman from beyond the arc. So don't, don't sleep on that guy. Yeah, had struggled a little bit uh, in the second half, uh, missing his first two shots of the half, but came back and made that three for his team.
Gracie Bonds is third, third basey uh, Brown and McMahon on the floor for the Hogs at the moment. Upchurch gets it taken away by Brown. Havelinas have a 3 2. Going at it, but Brown's going to take it all the way. Brown made that layup look easy, but let me tell you something about that layup, Marcus. Quite challenging, but a sensational play by Jamal Brown. Puts his team up by five, and the Havelinas get the ball back. And Havelinas totally pumped up right now. Everybody up off the bench, and the Havelinas know what this momentum means. Get some momentum on their side. And well, and you know, you saw the second half open up with uh, Chuck Guy from the Texans putting it in on a, on a, on a pretty sick dug, if I may. No, it was, it, was, it was pretty sick, yes. And, uh, but it looks like the Havelinas are trying to get the momentum to go back their way. Because they're just forcing the Texans out of their rhythm. Yeah, and these, Hav these Havelina teams, once they get in rhythm, and they get out in the fast break and start knocking down shots, uh, you, better, you better watch out, because this team's as good as any out on the fast break. You know, the Havelinas ran that fast break to, to perfection, right? Getting down the court, 3-2 advantage, just a couple of options each way for Brown, but just a good overall effort. And you know, part of uh, the reason for the Havelinas retaking the lead is uh, Jamal Brown has been having active hands on defense. He's, he's got two steals in the second half, three steals on the game so far. And uh, Texans shouldn't be too comfortable uh, when they have the ball if he's around. Yeah, so Havelinas causing turnovers here and uh, has, has caused the momentum to shift here in the last couple of minutes after Charleston State looked like they were gonna come out and uh, put their stamp on this game, but the Havelinas is having none of it. Havelinas coming back out the same lineup. Brown got it into Boz the third, who was getting to the basket. Just connect, couldn't connect with them, so the Havelinas is gonna regroup at the top of, of the key. Eight seconds, Brown's gonna to put it on the ground, but taking the charge there is word for the Texans. Seems like a questionable call. Word doesn't look like his feet were set at all. Looks like he was moving with Brown. Yeah, it looks like it should have been a blocking foul there, but the referee saw it different. So, uh, Havelinas going to get whistled for that. Uh, six fouls for the Havelinas here in the half. None for the Texans. At least that's what the big board indicates thus far. Well, you know, we've heard of home cooking calls. Uh, I don't know what this is, though. The guy misses and the tip back unsuccessful there by Carter. So it's going to come the other way. Bracey shoots off the back of the iron. There's Word with the rebound. Yeah, Bracey tried to get a quick one up on the Texans, and he did pull up, and uh, his shot was not contested. He just wasn't able to score on it. First, Kathy Macklin, Carter, Guy. Word out there for Charlton Stable as they turn the ball over. And the offensive foul looks like it was wave. Yeah, it looks looks like, like it was on Word, I think. Yeah, it was uh, one of those plays where something happened away from the ball that caught the ref's attention. Excuse me, that was going to go on Carter. The foul on the offensive side. Looks like it was away from the ball. There, so Havelinas have the ball here. Bailey loses it at, the, at his feet, but Bonds the third able to get it. Sends it into the post. But come on, puts a move on Kathy Macklin, but unable to finish there. Yeah, Rebound I mean, goes to Carlton State. Ramon's capable of playing like that, but he hasn't got a lot of playing time so far in this game. And, uh, you know, uh, you can't imagine his rhythm would be that good as Bassey followed that play from behind and blocked it the entire way. Guy so quick uh, to get to the basket, gets the lane and it hits it full steam ahead. And it's very hard to stop once uh, once he does. But good job there by Bassi tracking him down from behind. Yeah, Bassi knew Guy would be quick, and it looks like uh, 
Bassey told himself he's going to have to give the position, but can make the block instead. First puts it on the hardwood. And it's intercepted there by Bailey, and Bailey has another turnover uh, cause. Yeah, Bailey forced the steal there. And that's what the Havilinas have been so good at so far here, Mark. They, it looks like they know where the Texans want to pass to. They've been able to disrupt the Texans' offense for most of this game. Massey from the corner, in and out. Oh! He tries to throw it down, but looks like he's going to get the call there and go to the line for a couple. Yeah, Ma almost successful in doing so, as you said. He's going to head to the line, I think, for his first time of the night. And that's still uh, another still there for... Bailey now 13 turnovers for Charleston State. Avalina's turning over just nine times. Yeah, and uh, under under nine minutes in this game, uh, still plenty of time to go. The Avalina certainly are going to want to cushion their lead as much as they can. As Ma misses that first one there, but uh, you know only a slim five point lead, and we've seen this lead change uh, a few times so far tonight. So the Avalina's shouldn't feel comfortable by any means. Considering the way Tarleton State started the second half. Ma makes this one. Puts his team up 47-41. So Havilene is up by six here. Under nine to go. Word pulls up, misses in and out. Gracie comes out with it, slows it down a little bit. And Gracie's pretty smart to do so. Uh, this play's been getting kind of a, a little bit more physical. They're gonna call an offensive foul on Bonds the third. And there is Kathy Macklin, takes the spill there. That's another tough call. Bonds wasn't even going directly into Macklin. Looks like he was trying to jump away like, from him. Yeah, he's like, looks like he tried to avoid him stepping to his left. That's going to be the third foul on Bonds, the third. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause Wallace to come back in in place of uh, MB3. Texans are in the bonus yet again here with 8.14 left in the game. That might be a deciding factor, Mark. Indeed, as Carlton State throws it away, he looks like he was going for first. But the set took a lot there. <laughs> yeah, just the miscommunication there between uh, Clemens and first there. And if we're saying the last call was questionable, maybe Rashid Wallace is why the ball don't lie, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up on eight minutes to go in the game, Havelina's by six with the ball. Brown puts it up. That's going to be a goal on Kathy Macklin. That's Macklin's second goal ten. He had gotten one earlier when uh, Bailey had gotten a shot off the glass. And uh, Macklin having a little bit of trouble timing those blocks. And sometimes, uh, especially with that shot, it doesn't look like even it was even on its way in. So Macklin may have gifted two points to the Havilinas here, giving them the 8-point, 49-41 lead. Yeah, so we're inside of eight minutes to go, so the Havilinas have a good opportunity here. If they can just hold on to the to the lead and play solid basketball the last eight minutes, you know, earning them a big win here, get, playing them back at six and seven, dropping Charleston State down to seven and six to have a this game ground here. And uh, the Star Conference. that's uh, certainly uh, an objective of the team and of Coach Pete. All looking to try to get better footing into the playoffs, Mark, and uh, as we all know, that could make quite a bit of a difference going into the playoffs. That depends on a uh, talk about matchups whenever you go into the Lone Star Conference Tournament. Last year the Havilinas went in their seventh, I believe, and uh, actually faced off the stadium. And went down in round one.
Yeah, Havelina is certainly going to be hoping for a better performance this time around, considering they do make it to the playoffs. Nothing is guaranteed here in the LSC. Nothing at all, exactly. Up church with the runner misses ground by Bracy here. Oh, Brown was trying to get the trailing Bracy there, but overthrew it. Might have been able to get a shot off, but he said no. Yeah, it's gonna be a fresh possession basically here. Yeah, Bracy managed to save it though, and uh, you're right, kind of start over the play for the Javelinas, and they had enough time on the shot clock to do that anyhow. Brown gets by the bigger captain, Ackman, he throws it down. And uh, you know, he, we saw Chuck Guy earlier taking it in and putting it all the way down. And now all of a sudden, Jamal Brown puts it in himself, and it looks like he's playing a little hop in his step. Yeah, Coach Feet's excited. The Havelinas here, a double digit lead. We're inside of seven minutes to go. Havelinas shooting 51% for the game, shooting very well. First gets into the lane, gives it all to Kathy Macklin. Clemens comes out of nowhere for the tip in after the Captain Macklin miss. Yeah, Clemens cleaning up the boards for the Texans. And it looked like, you know, the shot wasn't going to go in. It looked like Havelinas were surely going to rebound, but Clemens swooped in just in time for his team as uh, Havelinas travel there. Or, excuse me, a foul is going to be called. It's going to be just the... It's going to be just a, the third foul for... Uh, for the Texans here in the half. Havelinas have seven. And once again, going back to it, I think it does kind of speak on the physicality of both teams. Havelinas just it's more aggressive uh, than the Texans uh, are used to playing. Pass, he dumps it off to Bracey and they're gonna call him with the offensive foul. Yeah, so Bassey picks up his third here. Good call there. Texans having no problem drawing the charges in this game. Yeah, it's already been a couple of them called here tonight. Six minute mark of the game. Havelina's leading by eight. Bailey almost had himself another steal. The crowd looking for a travel. That's not going to give it to him. And guy throws it away, intended to throw for Upchurch here, I believe. It just wasn't on the same page. Goes over to the Havelinas. Havelinas trying to extend their lead. Well, when, when players like Adonis Bailey, you know, make that hustle, sometimes they don't make the steal. Uh, but, you know, they do throw off the offense, and it looks like that might have been what happened there for the Texans. Yeah, you got to do just enough there. And Bailey has a little bit of a lane, gives it off to Bassey underneath. Double pumps, but there's Warren to put it in. Yeah, Bassey with a good hesitation move, and Warren making sure to clean up the board. Good job by him. Avelina is just patrolling the paint right, right now, able to clean up any mess left over. Coast to coast, nice move there. By Harge, Mike yeah. Harge. Havlin is uh, managing to, to, you know, put on the full court press, but also usually getting back there in time. Coach Pete's gonna wanna talk about it as uh, it's four minutes, 49 seconds left to go. Eight point lead, Havlin with the huge opportunity here to get back to six to seven on the season. In, well, within the conference. And it'd be a very good opportunity for them once again and uh, give them, you know, just a little bit more momentum as they head, head into A&M Commerce. Commerce sitting right now, just like Kingsville at five and seven. Havelinas with an eight-point lead. Coach Key can't be too disappointed in the way his team is playing. And uh, got to give a lot of credit for the Havelinas. 
or to the Javelinas, excuse me, for being able to adjust, you know, despite foul trouble. Yeah, there's a 11-2 run to start the half, but since then, the Javelinas turning it around, going on a 13-9 on a run of their own. And uh, that's what, what's helping them get back on top. And uh, both physical play there coming from Bracey and Michael Hart, the freshman out of Georgetown. So Texans looking just a little bit more physical there, Mark. Yeah, they, indeed they are trying to, trying to maybe throw the Havelinas off their game here as the time starts to dwindle. Wallace puts it back on the floor, in and out. Bailey tries to, to grab it, but there's going to be no foul there. But Warren comes up with the ball, and the Havelinas keep it. Warren attacks the basket, and he's going to get the roll. Well, you know, he couldn't get the big time done, but he might have got something better by getting the and one opportunity. Mark, it's all about points, man. It's not about the dunk. Yeah, it looks like he was going to try to pass it out, but saw nobody in there, so it's like saying candy from a baby, man. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things, right? Warren saw it open and probably couldn't even believe himself. Yeah, it just, I don't think you're ever going to see that kind of lane there, but. Open up for a big 6'10 player like Damon Warren. Puts his team up by double digits, and this free throw can put him up by 11. Yeah, so nice breathing room for the Avalinas. Give them some options to play with in the last five minutes. Warren sinks it. Marshall Bond's third going to come in. Wallace going to sit back down. So Avalina's going to play uh, going to play their bigs right now and, and try to keep Charlton State out of the paint. Yeah, and this energy of the Avalina is so contagious. It's reverberating not only through the crowd. I feel it in myself a little bit. Gracie missed the inbound pass. Harge tries to put it in, gets the roll on the bounce. He puts it in. Havelina's lead by nine. Harge up on Bracey, just over half court. Coming up on the four minute mark, Bonds the third at the top of the key. Bailey gives it to Bonds the third as he Cuts to the basket and misses there. Doesn't get the call, falls down. And here's Guy trying to take it coast to coast. Over Warren, puts it in off the glass. And Tarleton State not done yet. Brings it within seven points. 3.33 to go here in the game. Yeah, two quick back-to-back -back baskets uh, there by the Texans. Brown and, Brown and Wall is getting ready to check in, but they're going to call Bracey with the push off there. And I am just going to, you know, uh, it's just a good thing that the you know the flopping violation doesn't doesn't go on to college students. I don't think they'd be able to afford it. Yeah, put his arm up there to clear out, and Hardridge, Hardridge just sold out like nobody's business, and it looks like he got shoved, but it doesn't seem to be the case there. Yeah, Hardridge just looking to sell it. Him and Dutchell Bracy have been pretty competitive all game, and it hasn't changed here. It looked like Bracy had a little bit of a force with him on that shove. Yeah, it looks like he has. Uh, it looks like enough contact caused it. Looks like the, it looks like that Padawan is the Jedi mind trick to send him to the floor there. Anyhow, 323 left in this game. Avalinas with a seven point lead. Tarleton State though, in the bonus. Still, three minutes to go. Time closing in on him, but seven points. It's a, you know, a, a pretty surmountable lead. Yeah, definitely with three minutes, 23 seconds left to go. It's plenty of time. And, uh, you know, this is what Coach Pete had, had talked about to me. Uh, you know, th this is the part where the Havelinas haven't been doing well uh, in these past four games. It's down the stretch. Trying, and, to, uh, trying to close it out. And it's a hard part. It's all about closing out the game, Mark. And the Havelinas uh, have been, we're doing good at that in the beginning of the season. But uh, it looks like it got away from them a little bit. And so this is uh, going to be a really trying time for the Havelinas. We'll see how they respond. And we're three and a half to go here in the game. Avalina is trying to get to six and seven within the conference. And a four game skid with the four out of the next couple of games. They're gonna be out on the road for the last five. Guy can go in the lane, challenge Warren, and he's gonna get the and one. And Guy just 
living in the paint tonight, just going out to have Alina's defenders. He has 19 points now. Yeah, guys next free throw can put his team just down by four. So it's a five point game now. Avelina is a, that, it looked to be <laughs> all but over a couple, uh, just about a minute ago. Avelina is leading by 11. Now it's down to a two possession game, four points. Check guy, eight of 12 from the field, 20 points now. Avelina's certainly gonna have to make sure their defense is on par. And it really is their defense that had gotten them to the good uh, standing earlier on in the season. Their defense is nationally recognized. So we'll see if it keeps up. Inside of three minutes to go, Havelina's with the ball up by four, 56, 52. Bassey trips, finds Wallace in the corner. And Wallace throws it back out to the top. Bassey pump fakes. Gets it back out to Warren. And Warren puts it up and it's rejected. It's gonna be a violation. Havelina's just lost sense of the clock there. And now it's gonna go back to Tarleton State with 2.35 left yeah, and it, four point game. That's certainly not the play you wanted, uh, especially a shot clock violation. It's almost a slap in the face, but you know, uh, if you're the Havelinas, you gotta you know, let that go, get away from you, not try to let it affect your play on the defensive end. So here's Guy, the real thorn in the side of the Havelinas here. Hard right, gets in the paint, dishes out to Kathy Macklin, and he misses, and the Havelinas are there to deny him. Yeah, Damon Warren not letting anything get past him. He understands the task that's ahead of him. Brown shoots for three off the back iron. Takes the high bounce. We're inside of two minutes to go. It's a four-point game. Hogs lead 56-52. Well, and the problem was no Havelinas were there to even try to get an offensive rebound, and uh, they shouldn't expect any shot to go in. Hard gets into the paint, and they're gonna call a blocking foul. That's a tough call. Devin Warren was straight up the entire time and doesn't know. And I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, so Hard looks like he was uh, a little shaken up on the play. He's at the free throw line trying to get his team to within a score. Don is Bailey gonna check back in. It's yeah. gonna be the fourth foul on Damon Warren. The Havelinas need Adonis Bailey now. He was the leading scorer of this game for the Havelinas. Harge misses that one. That's a big miss for the Havelinas as Warren goes to the bench. With the exception of Dwight Taylor, this might be the most, uh, at least offensively, productive lineup for the Havelinas. Brown, and Wallace, Bailey, Taylor and Bassey out on the floor. He misses both of them. Havelinas lead by four. Two huge misses for Tarleton State. Havelinas just trying to get it up the floor quickly. Trying to get an easy score there, but you're going to reset and send it back. Coach Pete's going to want to call time and talk about it a little bit. Yeah, a minute 28 to go. It looked like Bailey had a lot of room to operate there and could have gotten in a basket. But uh, Havelinas are... Uh, Trying to, uh, it looks like they're trying to go with uh, killing the clock rather than trying to put points up on the board. And I'm not sure that's the right way to go about things. Uh, if, you know, <clears throat> if, if Bailey looks in front of him, sees the room, sees the room to operate, you should still want to drive in on it and get the points in because this is only a four point lead. And with 90 seconds left in the game, you're going to want to get every basket in you can. Well, I'd, uh, if anything in favor of the Havelina is uh, up by two possessions, there's about, looking at the clock, and if you go by the shot clock, there's about two possessions left for each team here. Well, Carlton has a huge advantage so far with points in the paint. Uh, but, you know, Havelina has scored 20 points off turnovers, Mark, and their bench is outscoring the Tarleton State bench 32 to 12. And that's mainly in part due to Jamal Brown. 18 points, 8 of 11. Playing well for the Havelinas here tonight. Yeah, Jamal Brown, one of those guys off the bench that you know you love to have here in the corner. Oh yeah, sixth man of the year for the Havelinas, without a doubt. So 
minute and a half left to go. 124 and ticking. 56-52 Haveline lead. Eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Bailey with the ball. Puts it on the floor. Haveline has turned it over. A minute to go. And a big turnover there by Bailey. Couldn't get a shot off deep into the shot clock. Tarleton State can pull within the score here at the bucket. Yeah, Haveline has got to be very careful on defense. First almost loses his footing going to the going to the hole, but they're gonna call a timeout here. So Texans certainly want to talk things over and try to save that possession. Still 18 seconds on the shot clock, so they got a lot of time to work with. 51.2 seconds left in the game. Havelina still up by four, but a very uncomfortable lead. It's for like a two for one opportunity here with Tarleton State. Havelina's are certainly going to want to score regardless of what happens on this end of the floor. on the shot clock. Guy with the ball at the top of the key being guarded by Bailey. He's going to pull up over Bailey and he's going to sink it in his face. 56-55. Cold blooded. That yeah, check guy coming out strong for the Javelinas. And Adonis Bailey was all up in his jersey right there. Just... So Javelinas Still have the one point lead, Mark, in uh, scoring. Havelina's need to score here. It is not about choking out the clock. It is about getting the basket in, and the Havelina's need to understand that. Yeah, it looks like Bailey was about to choke out Guy that he was so close to him. Had great, great defense, great position. And just Guy yeah. had the shot, he had it lined up, and, and it was in. A phenomenal shot, and, and it is exactly what you said, Mark. It's one of those situations where you can say it's good defense. Just better offense. 40.5, Avelina's lead by one single point. So the Avelina's keeping this game very close. So the Havelina's big possession here. Coach Pete gonna stay with the same lineup he had of Brown, Bassey, Bailey, Taylor, and Wallace to finish the game. 40.5 40 seconds left. And we'll see what the Havelinas can do. Like I said, Mark, this isn't about trying to get the shot clock down to nothing. The Havelinas certainly need to put the basket in. And it, once again, it's just this play down the stretch. And it might come back to bite them yet again. We'll see what happens. The Avalina's uh, going through a bit of a drought here the last two minutes. Game within 10 seconds. And Carlton State playing really tough right now. Taylor gets by. Brown shoots the three. Almost goes in. Bailey's almost there to corral it. Six seconds to go. Guy has the ball. Guy trying to get in the lane. Misses, the ball's gonna go out of bounds, 0.4 seconds to go. And Adonis Bailey with the defense of a madman, Mark. It's gonna go over to Tarleton State with 0.4 seconds left, barely enough time to maybe even catch and shoot. Yeah, Mark, I'm looking around, Derek Fisher isn't on the court. <laughs> so I'm not sure who the Texans are gonna go to. But Coach Pete is gonna call a timeout here and make sure his team plays stellar defense for just four tenths more of a second. Yeah, Halloween is need to make sure not to foul. 
And there's certainly a lot of things to watch out for. Havelinas don't want to foul. They don't want to give up any alley-oop opportunity. And when you have a player like John uh, Kathy Macklin on the court, it's a, it, it, it's a risk that the Havelinas certainly need to be aware of. And the Havelinas got a shot there from Brown. It wasn't the shot they were looking for, but the only shot they could get. Corn, it wasn't the shot they were looking for, but Brown was open, did have a good look. It was just an off bound shot a little bit because I don't think Brown even expected it. Point four seconds left. Big, really big sequence here. Havelinas just got to hold on and not make any crucial mistakes and hope that Charleston State doesn't have any kind of a miracle in their pocket. So I just want to remind everybody to stay tuned here with us uh, for an interview with Coach Pete Peterson of the Javelinas following this game. But right now, uh, him and his team up by just one with 0.4 seconds to go. Charlton State going to inbound the ball. That's going to be a very, very tough time. But Hard Kathy Macklin, word, guy. You know, but... Uh, if, First. if you're a Kingsville fan, you should be pretty confident in Coach Peterson. He's been here long enough. He probably knows every play that a team would do in a situation like this. I'd usually agree with you, but when you got a guy like Lon Reisman in his 25th season, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to not go with him or think he has something up his sleeve. This timeout feels like an eternity. Yeah, I've never heard of a four-minute timeout. But, what do I know? Now it looks like players are taking the court. And uh, Coach P, gonna want to talk it over one more time, maybe uh, ice the Texans if possible. It's a very big play here, the game on the line. Just taking uh, every um, every possible precaution in the book right now. They don't want to allow an easy basket. Less than a second on the clock, 0.4 seconds to go, 56-55. Havelina's lead. So we're going to be looking for an immediate catch and shoot. That's all that. That's all that's really possible here, guys, to watch for. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a catch and shoot. They do have bonds on Mackey. And that's how the game is going to end. It ends in a collision. Try to go to Word up top, but the Avalinas hold tough there. Hang on to win. 56, 55. Yeah, look at Word back at six and seven. Final stats here. Havelinas get back to six and seven. Charlton State falls to seven and six here. The Havelinas take down the number four team in the conference. The Havelinas move in for now sixth place in the Lone Star Conference. Will head to Ain and Commerce in three days to face off against the Lions. Then head to Eastern New Mexico to face the Greyhounds. Then in that, uh, their road trip at West Texas A&M, then back home on February 27th versus Angelo State. Yeah, it certainly uh, wasn't a pretty win for the Havelinas here, but stick around. I am going to be talking to Coach Pete in just a little bit, and we'll, so we'll get his opinions on the game. So, so let's just go over the final stats here. Leading the way for the Havelinas 
I'm gonna have to give the credit to Jamal Brown coming off the bench, eight of 13. He put 18 points down for the Javelinas. Adonis Bailey complimenting his performance with 11 points, five of eight shooting, uh, two assists and a rebound. And both, uh, you know, Bailey and uh, Jamal Brown had, a, I think, a combined five steals on the night, so good job by them. But on the other side for Tarleton, they did end up shooting 46.3% from the field, 19 of 41 shooting. Chuck Guy playing mercilessly out here tonight. 9 of 14, 23 points for him. Yeah, I gave the Javelina fits all night long, was able to get into the lane and blow by the Javelina defenders. But in the end, uh, the Javelinas just uh, looks like they wanted it a little bit more there. Uh, Tarleton came out in the second half and uh, outscored the Javelinas 30 to 25, but they had a, the Javelinas already had a, a nice size of... Uh, no okay of lead to hold on there, so. Yeah, Chuck Guy played impressively, Mark, but other than that, no other Texan actually went in double figures. So, a uh, good play by him, but the team wasn't able to support him there. Javelina is gonna take the one point win. It's not pretty, like I said, but the Javelinas will certainly take it. So just go ahead and stay tuned, and in just a couple moments, I'll be joined alongside with Coach Pete Peterson. Thanks for joining us. Hey guys, I'm joined alongside with Coach Pete. Uh, Coach, you know, uh, early on your What's team. What's up, Ferris? How you doing, man? <laughs> Not Happy too much. Night for the Javelinas. I know you guys finally got off the four-game losing Ooh, skid, yeah. but a lot of challenges came, uh, you know, to overcome and get that win. First one being foul trouble. Uh, Bassey sat most of the first half yeah. uh, on the bench with foul trouble. So, first question is, uh, how'd you guys really adjust to it? Well, the Trail Bracey came in, did exactly what we brought him in at Christmas to do, handled the backup point guard spot, did a great job for us, running that for 15 minutes in the first half and actually extend the lead a little bit and um, it was a tremendous first half defensively we executed very well and we're kind of right where we wanted to be at, at, at halftime that's a very good team out there they won six in a row coming in so we knew it was gonna be tough but we knew we had to have a good first half and we did yeah so uh, you know the other thing is you guys did have a good lead going uh, into halftime they did end up taking an 11-2 run on you guys uh, what happened there and how'd you guys try to respond from well this is you know I mean I, I've always said this I'll still take being you know, up at halftime rather than being down because you have a cushion but you know the other team what they're talking about is uh, this Lone Star Conference no one's going to lay down and die and feel sorry for themselves they're going to come out and fight like crazy and that's exactly what they did and um, you know they're going to make a run unfortunately we missed a couple shots we had some open looks we just missed them so we said we're okay you know I didn't want to call a timeout there and because uh, I just felt as long as we're getting open shots I don't need to call a timeout the main thing you're doing is you're taking bad ones and we weren't so um, then they came back but then we answered we answered with some big and we stretched you back out again that's what we needed and uh and then after that you guys did get up to a double digit lead and then the texans came back with a lot of fire closing out the game 0.4 seconds on the clock you guys were up by one uh describe what you guys had to do for that play well as we came down um uh, we're trying to take as much time off the clock as we could for the shot and then uh so they wouldn't have much time left and uh check you guys driving hard we know he likes to drive right and um uh but we but we made a play Adonis came over the high side, and we're chasing the ball, and, and he got a block on him. And um, it was just, you know, it was great to see us make a play at the end instead of standing back and letting them take it right to us. So that was huge. And then, then we had to make another play on the inbounds and uh, put Marshall in there. Marshall's going to jump a little higher than Reed, you know, about like that. And uh, uh, we figure with point four, they're probably going to go with the rim. And that's exactly what they did. And uh, Marshall got up and, and got it. And I'm just real proud of him to do it. So sometimes you substitute work sometimes they don't sometimes your plays work sometimes they don't but everything tonight I think dealing with Rashad's foul trouble knows that we were a true team what we had endure everybody got everybody made plays uh, Jamal Brown I thought had an exceptional game and um, uh, so maybe you know this is a big one for our psyche I know this one really helps it keeps us in it Coach, Peter, uh, Coach Peterson thank you so much for joining me congratulations on that right. win. hey mom dad my brothers Yobergs out in Denver what's well, about seven degrees it was 70 here today see ya all right, and the next home game for the Javelinas will be on the 27th. It'll be the last one of the season. And next coming up with me here, Adonis Bailey. Adonis, you know, early on, Rashad Bassey had to take a seat on the bench with the foul trouble. Uh, what did you try to do yourself to uh, kind of adjust to it? Uh, my teammates, they all, always look for me to score. They always encourage me to keep scoring the ball. Uh, I just had to step up as a, as a role player. Seeing that Rashad was on the bench, I had to step up as a second role player. Even Dub stepped up really big tonight. Jamal, he stepped up real big and the effort to win the game tonight. So I just had to take on the role as a leader. Yeah, you guys were uh, looking pretty comfortably up uh, going into halftime. What happened in the second half to let them get back into it? Uh, we gave 
we gave Word an offensive rebound on a free throw. And when, when that happened, we kind of got a little shook a little bit and went down and down in a slump. But Jamal, again, he pulled us out of it, scored a lot, a lot of big points, big baskets. I think he led us in scoring tonight, which is awesome. Uh, we just, we found a hot man, we keep going to him. We tried to go to Reed a lot tonight. Uh, we went to Jamal a lot. And we just all play well together. And you guys got finally got off of the four game losing skid, uh, finally getting up a, a win and against a win against Tarleton that actually had uh, won six straight coming into here. So uh, how does that? What does that mean for you guys? And uh, like, uh, what's your mindset going into the next game? Uh, coming into the game, we knew that we couldn't leave this building with, on a five game losing streak. We didn't want to do that. Uh, um, anything could happen to any team in the conference. Anything could happen. Anybody could lose, and we just. I don't know what, what place they Tarleton was in, but we just knocked off a big team. And we, st we still in the running for it. We still can come out and get it. And we, we want it just as bad as anybody else. Thomas Bailey, appreciate it so much. Thank you. All right, so the next home game will be here on the 27th against Angelo State. We'll see you guys there. I'm Ferris Bauer with the Havelina Broadcast Network. Have a great night.